may have been just a little too much. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and I missed you guys so much. So as most of you know, I took a little bit of a hiatus and it was just because I did have a family tragedy. Uh, we lost my cousin um, at the very beginning of June. He was like 23 years old, super young. And um, when death happens, it just changes things. So I wanted to kind of do a check-in and I kind of wanted to just chat about that because I feel like my story maybe would be able to help some of you because we've all had losses. To be perfectly honest, I was probably closer with my cousin um, when I was a kid. I uh, babysat him a lot. I'm not much older than him, but um, you know, life just happens. Adults go different directions and that's just what happened to our life. I think that we had always hoped that eventually someday we would be able to kind of reconnect and, and become close again. Uh, in fact, I hadn't talked to him that long ago and uh, you know, unforeseen circumstances happened and um, he's no longer with us. So I think the hard part for me to process was that time ran out and we weren't able to like reestablish that relationship and reconnect and I guess you just don't realize how long you know you're gonna be here like today could be your last day that's why I felt like this video was really appropriate because this past weekend I'm sure most of you or all of you know that you know the horrible circumstances that happened in Orlando Florida I am NOT going to talk about politics or media because I'm sure we've all seen and heard enough of that. I would just like to touch on, you know, when you lose somebody you love and you, you lose someone that you didn't expect to cross over that quickly and how much that impacts your life. So with that being said, of course, I want to pay my respects to everyone in Orlando, everyone in Florida, victims that are no longer with us, as well as victims, friends, and families. And it was horrible, horrible circumstances. You would think that me being a paranormal investigator and having as much experience as I do, like I've been to haunted locations all over the world and I am completely 100% certain that life after death exists. I am no longer questioning it. I'm no longer researching it for proof because I've already found enough proof for myself so with my experience, you would think that when someone that I'm close to, like my cousin, if he passes away, that not that I would be okay with it, but that I would be more accepting and understanding of it um, because I know this isn't the end. But it didn't work that way this time for me. It's been quite a few years since I've lost a family member close. When I, when I first heard about my cousin, um, it was even harder because I live in Las Vegas, like most of you know, and all of my family is still in Colorado. Like you guys know, I grew up there. Like my whole family was like hardcore snowboarders for the most part. And uh, not being there when someone passes and you're like a few states away feels like even weirder. And it doesn't make sense because it's not like if I were there, I could have stopped it, you know, or anything like that. But it just, distance makes things strange. I cried a lot. I cried a lot because he was 23 and when you're 23 you have your whole life ahead of you, you know? Like I was doing crazy shit at 23, you know? Like I was never a party or anything like that, but I loved to travel and like I was always on like road trips with my friends, you know, and stuff and especially being from Colorado like, you know, outdoorsy hiking or 
going to do different things, different monuments, and, and always just being out in the wilderness or whatever. And so thinking that he's so young and he, he went so soon, I was having a really hard time accepting that. Not once did I ever consider trying to communicate with Brandon. I don't actually practice any sort of ghost hunting or communication in my house. I actually don't believe in it because I believe if you do practice, you know, with your tools like the SB7 or SB11 or Ouija boards or, or even just a digital recorder, I believe that things know that you can communicate and they're not going to leave or they can sense it even if it's not in your house, it's your neighbor's house and they have an attachment. You know, it's funny because I remember when Mark and Debbie Constantino passed away and the whole paranormal community went crazy. Everybody wanted to immediately start doing like digital recording sessions and like ovulus sessions because they wanted to reach out to Mark and Debbie and some people were like, oh, it's not appropriate, it's not the right time. And some people are like, some psychics came forward and they're like, oh, it takes a year or something for them to like finish passing over, like there's a process to it. You wouldn't be able to connect immediately with them. And I don't really think there's a right or a wrong time because I do remember after Mark and Debbie passed, Patrick Burns and Chris Fleming, who Patrick Burns is, he was one of the judges on Paranormal Challenge on my episode, and so is Chris Fleming. I follow both of them on social media. But like the day after Mark and Debbie passed over, they got a bunch of static and noises coming through their phones. And they thought that they heard Mark and Debbie while, while Patrick and Chris were on the phone together. So to be honest, I don't really agree with that statement. I just don't think that if you're some random ghost hunter out in the United States and you want to connect with Mark and Debbie, they're going to come through. I think that they would be more likely to connect like through Chris and Patrick who are very close to them or even family. But last week I had a couple of weird things come up that were random and my friend Kat called me. She had this friend that was having a lot of movement and like dark energy in her house. So Kat and I went over and we did kind of like a house cleansing and stuff like that. We did do a mini investigation just to see if something would communicate with us. And so I am going to um, probably put some of the audio up on the channel this week. So stay tuned because we got some really cool evidence. It was mainly like growls and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't a professional video set so I don't think I'm going to be showing much if any of the actual footage because it was just Kat and I shooting while we were, we were trying to catch evidence basically while we were smudging and, and cleansing the house. But then Thursday was Kat's birthday and Kat and I had planned this. It was like a, for Kat's birthday, she wanted to have a birthday party, but instead of like drinking or games or like going to the bar or like a club or something, she just wanted to have like her close group of friends and we all go to a haunted hotel in Vegas and stay the night and we investigate. So that was what we did for Kat's birthday. Now take in mind, we'd been, we'd planned this probably like a month and a half in advance and the, the hotel had been booked like a month ago. So on Thursday, I was really dragging my feet and I told Kat, she's one of my really good friends. I was like, man, like I'm still so upset about Brandon, you know, like I don't even know if I should be doing this. I don't know if I'm like in the right mind state. I don't want to be negative trying to, you know, just have fun and communicate like I just didn't feel like I was I was like in the right spot like with my polar body you know but I did go because it was Kat's birthday six or seven of us total that were investigating and we decided to go to the Luxor and we just got some random room in the Luxor so I am gonna post some of that video footage this week too for you guys once again it's not professional footage it's not the investigations you guys have seen before it's just us hanging out for Kat's birthday party. You know, what kind of, who wants to do a birthday party like that? You guys want to do a birthday party like that? Call me up, be like, Crystal, let's go do a birthday party and we'll plan it in Vegas and we'll just do a whole night of ghost hunting. But uh, we showed up and we got everything set up and I just wasn't feeling good. I was really upset still about Brandon. I was just like depressed, you know, and uh, couldn't shake it. A couple hours into investigating, we were getting some really good responses and stuff, but Brandon came through. 
I know his voice and uh, he came through on the spirit box and talked to me for quite a while. I didn't feel normal about him not being here until until that. No, take in mind, like I wasn't investigating with my friends asking for Brandon to come through. In fact, I think I just told everybody, I was like, I just want you guys to know that like I may not be on <clears throat> my A game for investigating because you know, my cousin passed away. And not once did I ever ask Brandon to come through. So when it happened naturally, it was like, it was crazy. I guess that feeling that I got, because he is my family and stuff, it was like, it was like closure for me because like I wasn't there to say goodbye. Um, it was an accidental suicide and uh, nobody really felt like they got to say goodbye. I wish that other people, if things like that happen where like, where family goes quick and you, and you didn't expect it, or just any time in general, like, it was closure for me, and I don't mean closure as in me not being realistic, knowing that after all of the evidence and, like, interaction I've had, that I don't believe that, like, the other side exists and that, that we don't have more to do. Just because this life is over doesn't mean that we're done, you know, forever. But it was like, I felt like I needed to ask some important questions when I realized it was him. And he, he confirmed stuff, like he was giving me family members names and stuff. And he, he actually, he actually apologized, which it wasn't like, you know, it was an accident. It wasn't like his fault or anything, but um, it was like, It was like, it went from me needing the closure of talking to him and it turned around to like him needing closure to talk to me. And it was just shocking. It was just like really like, it was really powerful because you just don't think of it that way. I told him that that he, he didn't need to apologize, you know? I asked important questions like if he had crossed over and, or you know, I wanted, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't like stuck in the gray zone, you know? Like so many entities get trapped somehow. Like the whole family of the Lizzie Bordens are going to be stuck inside that house on the East Coast, you know? And I was just really, I was really concerned that he hadn't crossed over because he has a daughter. And, uh, I mean, he, he really assured me that he, he had crossed over, but that he was just going to be around often because of his daughter. Because it was like, I felt like I needed that for closure, but it was almost like he needed it more for himself. There was another friend of Kat's that was there that her husband had passed away unexpectedly a few years ago. And he came through and he told her he loved her. And he asked us to give her a kiss for her, which we were like, no, we won't do that, bro. But then the next thing he asked was, how's my cat? How's the cat? And that was just like, oh my God. That came through on Spirit Box. He's like, how's the cat? And I was just like, he still gets it. He remembers, you know? Like, it's not infinite. It's not just over. It's like, there's so much more in this universe. And then even Cat had had a personal friend that she had that, that passed away and he came through on the spirit box and uh, it was actually his birthday the day we went and Kat had asked him what's so special about about today and he came through on the spirit box and he was like it's my birthday and we were just like stunned he played guitar a lot he was like a big guitar player and so you could tell like Whoever was in the room was fighting to get to talk on the spirit box. 
And so when her friend couldn't get through, you would just hear guitar start to play through the spirit box. I mean, it was it was an amazing, an amazing night. And I, I really feel like for most of us that were there, it gave us some closure that we needed for certain people that we weren't really expecting to to really hear from. It wasn't that wasn't why we were there necessarily. When life happens, when you switch jobs or when you lose people, when massacres happen, it's almost like you can feel the earth change, the earth tilts. Things are no longer the way they used to be. And I feel like since Brandon's death, as a paranormal investigator, I have grown and I know it's only been like two or three weeks. And those, that time I was away from YouTube, but I feel like the most growth that I've had in a while because interacting with him and understanding another level of communication and evidence and interacting with the other side. Like my original plan was like, I want to teach people that this isn't scary. I want to teach people that they shouldn't be afraid of ghost hunting. Even if you're a newbie and you've never done this before, that's okay. You can still try it and don't be afraid to try it. There is a place for you and you never know what your trait is going to be. Everyone in ghost hunting has different abilities, whether it's photo work, capturing things on still photo, or capturing things on video, or for me, spirit box. I always get the most evidence on spirit box. But it was like I changed from just wanting to teach people not to be afraid about it, to now wanting to teach people that life isn't over just because something happens on earth that's tragic or traumatic, that it's some sort of a lightning bolt lesson also in your life to remind you not to stop going. You have to keep going. And if you're at a point in your life and you haven't you know, met the goals that you had hoped to meet at that age or whatever, it is never too late to go back and do it again or start over or start fresh or follow your dreams. I feel like part of me needs to also live for Brandon now. I mean, 23 is so young. It reminds me that I don't want to work a 9 to 5 job just to bring in income and pay the bills. I want to enjoy what I do every day. And then it doesn't become a job. It becomes your dream. All of a sudden, I got this lesson that we as humans are not the ones that necessarily need closure or need to communicate with those that have passed. And I'm not saying even family or friends, even if we go to investigate. We as humans, all we're doing is taking the equipment to communicate. It may not be about us trying to communicate, but it's about them trying to communicate with us and their message. It wasn't just one-sided. It wasn't, it's changed from me not just communicating because I like to investigate and because I'm good at it. It became, I have a final note to share with Brandon and he has something that he wants to share with me. And I got the lesson that life isn't over when you die. I know that sounds simple and I already knew it, but there's something different about it when it's your family or your friends. And it's like you think that because physically I'm here and spiritually you're in that realm, I can't just call you and have a conversation like I would if you used to live down the street. But now you learn that that's not gonna be the last time you see him or talk to him. And I don't mean necessarily through ghost hunting, but I mean when you when it's your time to cross over like i'm not even thinking of it as death anymore it's like it's just this chapter ended here for brandon and and he's moving on to his next chapter wherever that is the fact that like i know he's okay and he's he's not stuck and and you know like the hardest part was that he told me he was sorry 
I would never urge people to go buy a bunch of ghost hunting equipment just because their family member or friend passed away. I wasn't really planning on interacting with Brandon. I really truly believe that it it needed to be organic, so please don't take this video and misconstrue it. I didn't feel like myself again until last Thursday when I was able to let Brandon know that I loved him and that it was okay. Thank you guys for being so patient with me through such like a hard time, you know, in my life. It, it doesn't happen very often, but for those of you that were like checking on me and making sure I was okay, like I really appreciate all of you. Um, I had such awesome, sweet comments on social media and YouTube checking on me. So thank you everyone who did that. I really appreciate it. And uh, I should have some evidence up this week for you guys because I have two things, two crazy adventures I went on last week and um, more reviews. Everyone's wanting to um, talk about the new Ghosts of Shepherdstown um, with Nick Groff. Everyone's wanting me to talk about my opinion on Amy Allen and the Dead Files. Um, so I have a bunch of that stuff coming up, but if you guys have any other um, ideas or anything you want to hear about, leave me comments below. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and stay tuned. There should be more uploads this week. Thank you guys for being so awesome. Let's get back on track. We're back from dead.